personal wellness a blast in the face. Oh, we're doing the trial. It's the fi it's trial day two. I think final trial. I have chips. I'm going to Ow. eat some. Oh, I... fucking hell. This is... You check? Oh my god. What did you do? I burnt myself on the thing. Ow, 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 and ow. I have a burn. I have an oven burn on my arm, actually. Because I reached in, but the door wasn't all the way down, so the underneath of my arm touched the oven door, and the burn is still there. It's from last year. Yeah, I, I feel that. Woohoo, Ace Attorney! Okay. Were you able to sleep last night? Huh? Oh, sleep. Sure, I slept. A grand total of zero hours. Someone was up all night screaming. Oh, sorry. Oh, hey, I'm here too! Oh, let's go! Good then, Morgan, you two. Looks like you're ready to pull on, put on a real show. Fuck. Before you do, I have a good luck gift for both of you. It's a picture of me. Oh, fuck, it's a cassette. The voice print analysis came back and the results couldn't be more clear. The voice in the mock trial video and the tape recording are one in the same. <laughs> in other words, the recording's a fabrication. I'm so eating. <laughs> the lab is continuing their study of the tape. So far, they found signs of over overdubbing. But it's going to take a bit longer to recover the audio that was erased. Thump. Oh. Who's there? Wait! Did you see who it was? No. I got a quick look, but they got away. Fucking Hugh O'Connor. I thought. <laughs> No! <laughs> I think it might have been you. I bet he was eavesdropping. I wonder if he saw our hand. <laughs> Shut up, Ovin. Well, I'm sure he wasn't the only one just now. The Robin and Box Girl were listening in too. I'll make sure they don't make him run for it. That's my final gift to you. I know why I did that. I know it's already cooked. Ow, not again! Okay! That's all that's okay. left. Okay. All that's left to reach to the Hey, chair. Athena, are you like baking a cake in your mind right now? Um, I don't know what you. Okay. Then. Whatever you say. Time for a mini cords of steel workout. I'm Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. Your turn. Oh. I'm Sykes. I'm Athena Sykes, and I'm fine. <laughs> My broken kazoo. good <laughs> for life. Here we go. All rise. Woohoo! Silent! Colonel, reconvene for the trial of Juniper. I forgot that's who we're trying here. <laughs> The Sykes Brigade is title totally psyched. Er, I mean, the defense is ready, Your Honor. Sykes Brigade? The prosecution is ready as well! Er, I mean, isn't that right, Prosecutor Blackwell? Yes, well, moving right along, yesterday's adjournment was expected, yet unexpected, yet unnecessary, whatever. This, I don't remember the word. But I'll be running a tight ship here today, so no funny business from anybody understood! Oh, this is me. Ahem, <laughs> forgot. Uh, your baldness, Robin Newman and Hugh O'Connor have recanted their confessions. Recanted? That's a word. But later I shall grill them at leisure to find whether I can charge them with perjury. 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 That's a word. Per that, I know this word. Well, this surely complicates matters still. One must not overlook the facts. Now about the school camera photo that was submitted yesterday. A pity, but what ev that evidence is no longer relevant to this case. The art room clock runs fast. It cannot function as an accurate measure of time. For the bungling detective will overlook that. He is paying for his failure as we speak. Yay! 
can't hit that guy. Fourth attack with full body. Objection. Work with full body parts intact. Hmm. But if that's the case, then what were we? The accused is the sole person who could have moved the body from the art room to the stage. And I mean to prove it here this day. Heal yourself. It's just like Detective Fulbright said. But what else does he have up his sleeve? My arm! See this? <laughs> what are you, a toothpick? My un- what? My understanding of this heinous crime is thus. Who talks like that in these- in 2026? 2027, actually. He's- he's wannabe, okay? He's a wannabe. I want to be in the Great Ace Attorney. <laughs> The murder took place near the center of the art room, as evidenced by the blood stain. Blood was also found on some pottery next to the window over the maintenance area, which is to say the body was carried over to that window. Sure. From there, it was dropped down to the maintenance area below. And though there was a nary scratch to the body aside from a fatal wound. <laughs> <clears throat> that too was per the script. Oh, hello. A high drum mat was employed to cushion the fall. Then a ball card was used to haul over the body to, to haul the, uh, stage. That's not very clever. I mean, the same exact body moving scheme as a script. Unoriginal! Anyone could have moved that body that way. Where did my phone go? Uh. I realized I don't have my phone anywhere. I should probably look for that in case someone calls me. I'll call it. No, actually, what? Where the hell is my phone? <laughs> Probably downstairs. One sec. I can call it. <laughs> oh, how are you doing, chat? <laughs> I did not just say that. I'm gonna kill myself now. You just said partner. Objection. Nobody said partner. Oh no! Your propensity to spew forth words before you think is not very clever either. Why you? Why me? I ask myself that every day. Oh my Moreover, God. the prosecution has a witness, which is most unfortunate for you. Witness! It's time for you to come forth. It's fucking Clavier again. Please don't be Clavier. I swear to God. Ah, it's you! I prefer Clavier now! <laughs> <clears throat> well then, for the witness, please state his name and occupation. You, O'Connor. I'm a senior at Themis Legal Academy and I'm studying to be a lawyer. Yesterday I told that lawyer there. What? I told that lawyer there that I would testify to the truth. So I intend to cooperate fully in today's trial. Happy now, Miss Sykes? Mm -hmm. What's he up to now? Your girlfriend's a shit. I hate her. Then if the court appreciates your cooperation, Mr. O'Connor, now your testimony, please. Also, don't swear at the. the you O'Connor said that again, and you'll find my fist flying to your face. Your girlfriend is shit. Punch. Ah! <laughs> The lecture hall was packed before the mock trial, but the rest of the campus was empty. Do that. Just kill you. Oh, no. I don't have a Wi-Fi. One sec. Ah. Wi-Fi. Almost Oh, please. Why are you like this? Okay. I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and the maintenance area. She was heading towards me, so I assumed she was on her way to the maintenance area. I didn't have time to stand around and see what she did after that. You know, you're a shitty friend. The real truth hurts so much, doesn't it, Miss Sykes? Or maybe you thought I was going to bring up something else entirely against your client? <laughs> Never a snappy comeback when I need one. 
He's coming straight at us today, using any means possible. To protect the students or to climb up high when setting up the stage. And that was brought up over to the stage from the storehouse. The client is the student council president. What's wrong with her taking it upon herself to put the mat away after they've used it? Objection! Ew, I forgot his voice. Oh, there is plenty wrong. Phoenix wrong. But there is one mat in the entire school. <clears throat> But there is one mat in the entire school that could cushion. There is but one mat in the entire school that could cushion the fall from such lofty heights. There we go. The mat in question was indispensable to moving the body. You have to know everything. I think I get it now. The drag marks we saw behind the stage were made by the mat. What happened last time, anyway? Um, I don't remember. So, <laughs> only the mat and thickness were. I just remember that I saw a cutscene and Hugh had blood on his hands, oh. and Juniper was crying. If only the mat of that thickness were was where the body is assumed to have been dropped, it would be hard to deny a possible link to this case. We're off to a bad start again. You sure you're okay, Athena? <clears throat> Game on, you. Game on. Game on? Uh, what, you mean like chess? Did someone say chess? Oh my god, Prosecutor Moss <laughs> Edward. get out of here! I'm gonna turn your arrogant perfect- That's, that's Athena. That's Hi! <laughs> Sorry. I'm gonna I've... turn your arrogant perfect score grand into a teary-eyed crown of failure. I'm gonna turn your nerd emoji looking ass into a failure! <laughs> Nerd emoji looking ass? Not a nerd emoji. Yeah, this is the guy who messed up his words. <clears throat> hold it! Hold it! Hold it right there! <laughs> what? I was just getting to the important part. You go to unsheath your slate. your- What the fuck? How did I say <laughs> You- e <laughs> Eager- You're Hold on one second, let me do you nosuke. <sighs> Eager to unsheath your blade, Sykes-dono. Your heavy breath heaves to where I stand. <laughs> Rude. A human's breath doesn't travel anywhere near that far. So the only issue is distance? You're not denying that you're a heavy breather? <laughs> I'm just saying that scientific studies have proven that it's not- Scientifically speaking, Emma Scott! Hang in there, Athena. No matter how many insults they hurl, it won't affect the judge's opinion of you. My own self esteem. No one cares about that. <laughs> so real for that. <laughs> Let's get back to what happened before the mock trial. Why? Why are you testifying about this? I forget. Uh, I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and maintenance area. Mr. O'Connor, are you positively sure you were standing exactly where you said? I was between the stage and maintenance area, and she was behind the backdrop. He's sticking to his guns. Pew pew! The issue here is where he was standing when he says he saw Junie. Nothing I say will mean anything about evidence. I have to dig a little deeper. Maybe I should look at my court record. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So this, it's... The back, this moon is the backdrop that's for the stage. This is the statue that's in the background of this picture. Um, this was found. Oh, discovered on the stage. Okay. School banner has blood on it. Gavener's flag... Gavener's banner is burnt. Sage set up. Sage set up? Yes. That's not. That's not. Um. Is yes, this you? Okay, that's. Okay, what? Perhaps. Perchance. Why is he forklift certified? <laughs> Just like Luke Triton. Voice burn analysis and lecture hall diagram. Don't know why I need that. Oh, and before you ask, I had my glasses on. Therefore, I'm positive it was Juniper. That is not an issue. 
the fact that he has to stand out is sus. Man and the art of mastering the bar exam. He shouldn't assume anything. <clears throat> it only shows that you're not positive. Objection. Such wild momentum. Perhaps you were a raging you were a raging bull in your past life. <clears throat> Compare me to some stupid farm animal? <laughs> Oi, Justice Tono. Our assertion is Juniper was simply putting the mat away. In that case, where would she be taking it? Oh, um to the storehouse for the maintenance area. Precisely. Therefore, is not ro there is not wrong with the witness's judgment in this matter. Can you talk like a normal fucking person? I hate you so much. It is your wild charges that are the issue here. But I cannot help it if you seek if you keep seeing red. Mm. Yeah, I don't like I don't like how he said that. <laughs> Judging from those flashbacks that I remember from the first fucking case. Yeah, she does keep seeing red. He's going to get a face full of justice, Apollo Stell, if he keeps that up. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, I I'm saw her heading weak. towards me. I'm just a weak girl. Hold it! Hold it! Oh. Then it's entirely possible that someone else moved the body, correct? Objection! <laughs> Are you mad or merely delusional? Everyone was in the lecture hall before the mock trial. The rest of the campus was empty. Ergo, the only probable suspects were the three trial participants. I know. Thank you for stating the obvious. Well, what the fuck? What? I also know that you, Q O'Connor, are one of the participants. Mr. Confidence sure goes all out when he tells the truth. Well, I don't think he meant for any of that to be misleading. But it doesn't make it factual. Careful now, Athena. A genius like you could be leading you right into a trap. I'd be surprised if you wouldn't. But all I can do is change, charge forward with both eyes open. Ooh, I have an idea. Um, it has to do with this one. I don't remember where I found it. <laughs> 120. Um, I think it was in this. Or I don't know. It was on stage. Probably in that. Uh. How do I prove that you was not there? I was gonna say this. No. Okay. Crash and burn, bitch. <clears throat> Sebastian the best is better than you. For real. Get your ass out of the way, bro. At least Sebastian was nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was not. No, he was not doing the dumb, bro. But at least Sebastian was an idiot, and it was played for joke. <laughs> Look, Sebastian was smug, but you could easily just, like, break him down. You find one contradiction, and then he starts crying. He starts crying, yeah. I, I, read, I, read, I read his wiki. <laughs> How do I tell- Stop flipping your damn pages! I'm gonna flip oh, you off. Down. Okay, let's... She was heading towards me, so I assumed she was on her way to the maintenance area. That makes no sense, isn't she? Yep, that's a contradiction, isn't it? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Between this... Wait, look at the... Wait, the map. Stage and the vantage point. Where is the stage? This is not. This is. It's this not, is the okay, mock trial. Yeah, it's That's the lecture hall. Um, I don't have a map of the stage. That's stupid. 
Well, I kind of have this, but... Wait, where was he? Between stage and maintenance era area. I don't know where that was. <laughs> fragments, fragments. Oh god, I gotta stop. She was heading toward me, so she was on the way to the maintenance area. You didn't have time to stand around after that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Objection! Objection! Can you shut up? Wait, the stuff about the maintenance hall, what does that what? The maintenance hall? So that's where the body was dropped from. Yeah. Um... You didn't have time to stand around, but I was gonna say... Phew! <laughs> On stage. Okay, but you saw her... Okay, what? Do I need this? <laughs> the body was dropped from the third floor art room to manage room below. I was laid out to cushion the fall. Bar ball cart from Stora's house. We used to move the body. Archery. Make it look like. Things to prepare. Arrow. If I borrow one for the archery club, it could give away the this the part of the script's plot to be determined. Okay, well this arrow is I can't examine it. Uh! Lecture hall. You saw Juniper. You're watching from a vantage point. Oh my god. What am I supposed to do, bitch? I hate this guy. I don't wanna look at him anymore. Get Clavier! Clavier! Can you like go through the, the statement? Okay. okay. Wait. The lecture hall was packed before the mog trial, but the rest of the campus was empty. That's when I saw Juniper dragging a large mat from behind the stage. I was watching her from a vantage point between the stage and the maintenance area. Wait, check the check the photos of the stage. The photos of the stage? Oh, cause of the fence! Cause of the fence! Yeah. Because of a fence. There was a fence. Defense. Objection! Woohoo! Defense. Got that right. So you saw the back of the stage from between the stage and maintenance area? Defense! 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 <laughs> I don't watch sports. Well, let's take a look at this photo taken by Miss Scuttlebutt, shall we? This shows this this shows this photo shows the students setting up the <coughs> stage the day before the mock trial. Do you see the big construction screen to the right of the stage in the background here? Oh well, yes, in fact there are a bunch of those <laughs> next to my house until a few days ago too. It was so noisy behind there, but I couldn't take a peek. Oh how it piqued my interest. Exactly, Your Honor. You cannot see past the screen. That is their purpose. <laughs> How exactly is that same position again? Since it was to the right of the stage, it should be right here. That's me. No, not you, Mr. Wright. <laughs> and from this vantage point, the witness claims to have seen her point behind the stage backdrop. Oh my! But the screen would have been completely in the way! That's right. Therefore, <clears throat> The witness could have possibly seen a client from this point. Can I see your left hand, or is it just like super glued to your pocket? Order! Squared! <laughs> Mr. O'Connor! Have you been lying to this court? The, the screen. Right. It must have slipped my mind. Are you telling me Mr. Genius forgot something as literally big as that? There are two kinds of memory lapses, the normal kind you mouth breathers have. <laughs> and the genius level lapses of memory that people like me have. Why don't you just admit that it was a normal, everyday brain part already? Will the witness now please restate what he remembers minus the lapses of memory? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> that's easy. I was on the other side of the screen. In other words, 
I witnessed Juniper from the stage side of the screen. Objection! What? What are you talking about? We're testifying that our client was behind the stage. But I need to remind this court the back of the stage is not visible from the front. To actually see our client behind the stage from the st st stage side of the screen. Screen side stage, yes. The witness himself would have been in the same area behind the stage. But in that case, our client would have definitely seen Mr. O'Connor. <laughs> Nice one, Athena. Keep it up. Objection. Ah! Kill yourself. Okay, I will. <laughs> Alright, golden boy. Is this not your chance? Telling the truth will be like a weight lifted from your chest. The truth? What truth? The tr- your- what? Uh, no, my Kleenex popped! The fact that golden me- Golden B. Golden boy here was where he initially stated. <clears throat> because I love that, right? that is to say, he was between the maintenance area and the stage. Objection! But then the screen would have blocked his view up. On the ground, yes, his view would have been blocked indeed. Oh, come on. <laughs> have you considered his elevation? <laughs> But consider how smoke always wants to rise up high. Uh, Athena, look at the photo again. Do you think... Something on the other side of that screen? Oh, this something is Athena. On the, some, something on the other side of the screen. Something high enough to see the stage. The crane? No way. <laughs> this crane right here? Forklift sort of... <laughs> I remember seeing a crane there on the day of the mock trial. Me neither, but it's probably safe to assume it was moved before you found the body. Th that's far enough, Prosecutor Blackwell. Remember, you promised! <laughs> I recall making no such promise. It was you who came blubbering to me about keeping quiet in exchange for information. Ah! What's all this about a prom- Ooh! What? My voice cracked! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That was a. There was something in my. What's all this about a prom? Is this about whatever Blackwell is using against him? That's and what's it got to do with going into the crane? <laughs> Golden. <laughs> God damn it! Golden boy did not go up in that crane for fun. Actually, he did. He did. He, he was working part time as a crane operator within school. Oh crimes. yeah, that makes so much sense. This is why he's in, he's like embarrassed. What do you mean to tell me a high school student was operating crane? Objection! The witness, uh, I mean to object oh, to the prosecutor's last statement. There's no proof I ever operated that crane. Look at these photos, bitch. Actually. There just might be something that proves he did. Is he just embarrassed that he uh, he can operate a crane? <laughs> what? No. It's a lot worse than that. This whole part-time job thing is true. I doubt it would be limited to a single day. It's worse than you think. It's worse? You were, you were probably working at the same site the previous day, too. He worked together. He's a, He was um, an accomplice in the murder. Is what you're thinking of? Is this what you're thinking of, Athena? There he is. See? Yep. The court can see his photo captured the crane's operator. And if you look carefully, he bears a definite resemblance to Mr. O'Connor. It's the guy from Turnabout Wedding or something. Are you serious? This is ridiculous. Ah. Oh, very interesting. Let's ascertain whether this is ridiculous, as the witness says. This is- I forgot an as, and there's no says. Let's ascertain whether this is as ridiculous as the witness maintains. The defense agrees with the prosecution. Let's bring the facts to light. Hmm, that's all very well and good, but just how do you propose to do that? The person in the photo has one really distinguishing feature. His glasses? <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. 
but at least it's at least worth a try. His glasses. You can clearly identify the person in this photo as the witness as the witness by examining What the fuck? <laughs> his fingerprints! The ballistic markings. His neck? His neck, I guess. I don't know. Go. Cause he has a collar. He has a choker on there right now. Oh, it is. The figure in this photo is wearing a very unique object around his neck. Oh yes, you can see it right there! But then are you saying you mean to... Is this... Is this just that one clip that I saw? Okay. Mr. O'Connor's neck is almost entirely concealed by his tall collar. Oh my lord. Such a good egg. That's exactly why I believe this warrants further examination. <laughs> no, not a chance. That would be a blatant violation of my privacy. <laughs> You are a disgrace of a man. Now start. <laughs> oh my god! I knew it! It is! Oh my god! Now start unbuttoning <laughs> that collar before I hack it off! I need that screenshot. Oh my god, that was so good. Yeah, what's the big deal? Now let's oh see your what? neck. Guys, can you go <laughs> can everyone in the courtroom stop talking, please? <laughs> hey, Apollo! Mr. Wright, you're still in the gallery? Yeah, this is not new for court. I told it's Prosecutor von Manfred von Garma to take his shirt off one time. What? Uh, to see if he had a bullet in his this, shoulder. This isn't the first time it's happened in court? No, I've- t no. So, like, that's a bit, because I was watching my, my stream, my Instagram stream of Turnabout Goodbyes, and, um... What, what was he? Phoenix was like, Your Honor, I request permission to use this metal detector on Prosecutor Von Karma. Then Manfred was like, This is an invasion of privacy. And then the next thing I see is, Take off your shirt. Well, next thing I hear, because that's what I said. I have the clip on my phone. I'll send it. <laughs> Guess I have no other choice. He takes off his whole shirt. No, just your collar. <laughs> oh, shit. He's moving. Is that the proof of friendship? Oh. <laughs> hmm. Oh my. So where did you buy that neckband, if I might ask? I didn't buy it. It's handmade. There's only one like it in the world. Well, it sure looks like they have a neckband in the photo. Should we have the photo analyzed? <laughs> You're one irritating lady. Fine, I admit it. I work a part-time construction job. It has nothing to do with our school. Operating heavy equipment's no big deal for a guy who can parallel park one-handed. Everyone- everyone parallel parks one-handed. That's- that's how you parallel park! You're not supposed to use two hands, Hugh. <laughs> this guy- <laughs> But I never- uh, But I never expected one of my jobs would take me to my own school. When you factor in all of the required tests and apprenticeship, really, Ed, wouldn't you have to be at least 20 to have a license for operating a crane? I'm a nepotism baby. Oh, <laughs> um, about that. You see, I'm a genius, so, uh, you know. Objection. Nepo baby! <laughs> <laughs> Let us dispense with this in inane charade, golden boy. Hold it! No, pr Prosecutor Blackwell, please don't! High school seniors are 19 at most. Thus, they fail to complete their. <laughs> He's 18. High school. Thus, they fail to complete the requirements. But that does not apply to you. Does it, Mr. O'Connor? Why doesn't it apply? He's a senior, so he's around that. Oh, wait, I have to fix his head speed now. So he's around that age, right? No, no, don't, please! Fuck you, Hugh O'Connor. What the fuck? I told you. I told you. I told you. Actually, Golden Boy here is 25. He took a seven year, seven year break from school. Seven years Did ago. someone say seven years? Seven years! Wait. Come again. Take a gander at the off official school in Roman documentation. Tis all right here. Yeah. Uh. T -t -t Twenty-five. You mean he's older than me? Twenty-five-year-old high school student. 
kind of creep is he? Ew. Hold it! <laughs> A seven year break. Seven years. I have just one thing to say. There are two kinds of seven year breaks. The ordinary kind you mouth breathers take. And the genius kind people like me take. Mr. Wright took one. He, he took a seven year break. Which one is he? Can I punch him? Yeah, go ahead. Jumps over to But a genius would probably become a chore for a seven year break. I think you have that backwards, Athena. <laughs> Even geniuses make mistakes. I just no, happen to make mine only seven years in a row. Oh, what the fuck? I told you it was so bad. You could get away with using only like that. Enough of this jibber jabber. <laughs> Suffice to say, the witness of weather was up in the crane when he saw the accused da dragon mat. Whoops. The accused readied all she needed to move the body immediately prior to doing so. That much is clear. I see no de I see no need to deliberate the matter further. Hmm. Considering that the body was moved in the same manner as the script, I find Prosecutor Blackwell's claim to be quite persuasive. Does the defense care to dissuade, dissuade me? <laughs> the problem with the mat was used to move the body. Jenny's going to be under suspicion. Hmm. Athena, I just thought of something. What was Hugh doing in the crane right before the mock trial? He couldn't have been on the job at the time. I mean, he was waiting for the trial to start. Yeah, why was he in the crane? Wait, you don't think. Your Honor! Yes, Miss Sykes! I've got it! I've got an amazing idea that will turn the prosecution's claim on its head. A little conjuncture has never stopped us before. Conjecture. Oh, uh, it kind of has. <laughs> Interesting. Mr. O'Connor, you were using the crane, the crane to move the screen. Move the body. Move yourself. yourself. Why were you moving the crane? I'm using the crane. Moving the body? I don't know. The, should I say the body? I'm just gonna do it. Oh my god. Oh. oh. The body was just like it was in the script. So it must have been moved like in the script too. At least, that's what the prosecution believes. Most simplistic. Even foolish. Francisco <laughs> Vancana, what are you doing here? Foolish foolies. <laughs> Foolishly foolish fools who think me to think me for a fool. I never disappear. <laughs> Those are pretty strong words, Athena. Are you sure about this? Foolish fool. The witness is a licensed crane operator, so he could have used it to move the body. He should meet Luke Triton. <laughs> well, golden boy, care to chime in? I intend to say no more on the matter. Save that this does not bode well for you. Wait. He's on my side this time? Or is this another trap? <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> I can it's use really a bow and arrow one-handed. That's a crazy level of dexterity. I can even drive a crane one-handed. That's easy. But operating the crane itself is so complex it requires both hands. Now I'd have the court look at this. Oh. Oh, that's why his hand is forever in his pocket. Oh. Please tell me that's a ketchup stain. If this were a recipe for turnabout, too bad it's not. You wish. You wish. This oh. is me. Shut up. My hand was injured and required surgery. That's the reason I kept my hand in my pocket all this time. Why is it bleeding through your bandages? Dude, get them replaced. I've already verified this with the hospital of treatment. Quite a nasty wound, they say. I was pointing it too aggressively during the mock trial. <laughs> I see no need to discuss that. It has no relevance to this case. 
Maybe it's because you were Juniper saw you with blood on your hands. Two hands are required to operate complex machinery such as a crane. Ergo, on the day of the mock trial, the witness was incapable of moving the body by crane. No, I'm the Foolish fool, you are a fool. Foolishly foolish fool. I planned on moving the crane the night before the mock trial, but I got injured. I wanted to keep my part-time job a secret. I had, had to do it just before the mock trial inst instead. Yeah, I thought that this was the big break we've been waiting for. Now that the defense's sophistry is laid bare. Sophistry? Sophistry? I would have the court recall my claim. Prosecutor Sogi must say that one ten times fast. The body was dropped out of a third floor window to a mat near the maintenance area. And a ball car was used to move it to the stage, see? I've been paying attention! Gold star for you, your baldness. Now consider this. The accused was cited dragging the mat. Ergo, it was she who moved the body. <clears throat> Sorry, well I think you're on the right track, Athena. You do? Yeah, Juniper remains the prime suspect if we assume the body was moved per her script. So as the defense, you have to figure out how else the body could have been moved. I know, I know. Telling me to think of another way besides the crane? Miss Sykes, if you have a counter argument, this court would love to hear it. And if. If you do not, it's time for the verdict. Isn't that correct, your baldness? Check, check. Oh, not yet. All I have to do is show that the body wasn't moved like it was in the script, right? Well, that would show that the man had nothing to do with this case. There is a sword of great renown that cuts down sophistic lawyers. Its name is Evidence. You don't scare me. Which is not, Athena. You can do it. What's wrong with your face, Athena? It's a weird mix of terror and a creepy grin. Just focus on how the body could have been moved without it being dropped. How could anyone move it without just dropping it? Not like a good body. Eureka! <laughs> Wait, wrong game! Maybe it could. After all, there is a way to zip between the art room and the stage. Eureka! I could have easily used that thing. Did you just think in orange? Hmm? Oh, yes, of course! Miss Sex, the court would like to see what you have for us. To do is show the tiniest shred of pos pos the possibility. Possibility. The mountain ball cart weren't used to move the body. This is what was used. Take that! Boom! The key here is the thing that ties the art room and the stage together. Did someone say key? Wrong game. Might I propose an idea? It might do you well to tie your lips together, lest you further expose your ignorance. Please. This isn't exactly the time for black comedy, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> what are you talking about, Forza? Yes! I yes, I beg! Anyway, the court will recall the wire on which the school binding was hung. One second, I that The wire was strung between the art room and the stage, which allowed students to run or reel in the school banner from the art room. The body could have easily been lowered down to the stage via this wire! Wow, my kazoo is so broken. Objection. Spare me your armchair theories. This wasn't some kind of wi high wire act. The body surely would have fallen. Yet there are no signs of blunt force trauma. Oh, you surprised me, you Oh, you surprised me, Prosecutor Blackwell. Let me try that again. You didn't actually think I failed to account for that? I'm sure that's exactly what he thought. When we investigated the stage yesterday, the bottom part of the school banner had been tied into a pouch-like shape. 
And pouches are useful for carrying things. What do you think this one could have carried? Oh, oh, go on, please explain! The body was bundled into a pouch-like section of the banner. The body was bundled into the pouch-like section of the banner and sent down the wire. The body would have been down on that stage in a flash, and there'd be no need for a mat. Mm, I've heard the phrase, carrying the banner, but the banner doing the carry? Carrying the banner through it all. Objection. A mighty fine life, carrying the banner up and <laughs> I've no patience for you and your cheap parlor tricks. Your claim is as shaky as a corpse performing that absurd high wire act. If you have an actual have objection, oh, this here you go. If you have an actual objection, then just come back, just just come on and say it. I trust you recall the blood stains left on the art room pottery. If the wire had been used to move the body, I would <laughs> it would have to be the via the window above the quad, the one with the winch. However, the blood stains pottery, blood stained pottery was next to the window above the maintenance area. Ergo, the wire and banner had not all to do with this case. Pottery. I remember that. This doesn't look good. We'll be back to the mat theory if you don't say something. Well, Miss Six, I hope we have something better this time than a circus act. Me, personally, I'm finished with circus acts. Mr. Wright was one. There was a whole case surrounding a circus, and uh, I hated the people in that. The, the blood must not have been blood at all. At first we thought it was red glaze, but it turned out to be blood. Oh, I... I picked the wrong one. But, you bitch, you got it wrong. Then it's the victim's blood. Must not have been blood at all. The victim's blood. Maybe it's not the victim's blood. Did the police check to see from whom the blood on the pottery came from? <gasps> Hugh O'Connor! It was Hugh! It's Hugh! Hugh O'Connor! Hugh O'Connor! It's Hugh, o Hugh O'Connor! Hugh O'Connor! Shame on you, Sykes Dono. Have a little more respect for the constabulary. Const constabulary. Um, Ew. actually... Fulbright? Looks like they didn't check it. I don't want to get you down, Prosecutor Blackwell. Everyone makes mistakes. Not me, it's Fulbright. Spare me your cheek. We will, <laughs> we will know not either way till the tests are run. True, but in the meantime, I'm going to press my claim as far as I can. Your baldness, I demand that the blood on the pottery be analyzed this instant. It shouldn't take long to get the results back. Scientifically speaking. Well, that was not long at all. One cutaway. Oh my! That was quick! For history, if it turns out to be the victim's blood. Please let me know when you're Hugh O'Connor, Hugh O'Connor, Hugh O'Connor! <laughs> it seems the blood was not from the victim. Furthermore, a comparison with other parties involved with this case reveals Hugh O'Connor! Hugh O'Connor! But the blood belongs to one Hugh O'Connor. Ha ha ha! Ah! Guess who is a great detective? Me, hello, Sholmes! Score! Score! Sorry, I'm reading. Why is he still- oh, yeah, I guess. Athena! Oh, just had to relax, sorry. Hugh's hands... His hands were... 
Dripping with blood. It's because he was doing pottery late at night. Your Honor, as we saw earlier, the witness at hand had disappeared. Suffered. Suffered. He's <laughs> he sustained the wound in a struggle with the victim, and his blood drawn on the pottery. Okay, so my theory was wrong. Sad. It's the only explanation that covers everything. My theory was he walked in on Professor Means killing the guy or some, <laughs> killing her, and then he's like, Oh, there's blood on my hands now! But there's but one way to turn aside her blade. Do not cast the blame on me. Your grudge is with Sykestone, for it is she who forces me to explode, explode, explode! <laughs> Your secret. <laughs> Fine, whatever. The corpworbs <laughs> will observe this odd looking envelope. It was inside this that Miriam Scuttlebutt's it was inside this that Miriam Scuttlebutt's squi script was found. Miss Scuttlebutt's? But then the prosecution already came out. This envelope is the one that contains your script. Um, I was wrong. Circumstances have changed. You see, Golden Boy had hidden this from all of us. Let's see here! My word! Talk about the world's most painful paper cut! Indeed. You can clearly see that if this envelope is not opened correctly, a powerful spring-loaded blade will shoot forth, leaving a horrible gash upon the hand. The only one who hadn't been told of the cor correct way to open it was Constance Court. It's, uh, you really want to see my script that bad? Well, you better watch out. Read it without my permission, and you'll wish you hadn't. Oh, Hugh, what did you do? Pretty much just said that. The blood on the blade is the witnesses. Our genius here tried to sneak a peek at the wrong script, and paid for his foolishness. Um, this guy's the worst genius I've ever seen. Don't worry, Athena. The wound isn't that deep. You still got the wire theory. Yeah. Got it. Since the blood by the window overlooking the maintenance area isn't the victim, there's no longer any basis for denying the body was moved using the wire and banner. Therefore, the defense once again asserts just that. Hold it. <laughs> you call yourself a lawyer? <laughs> Don't you see the glaring contradiction in your thinking? The court would like to remind the witness that his role is not to point out. <laughs> and you, how can you adhere to such outdated beliefs? But whatever. It seems you've forgotten the two statues that were on stage directly below the wire. Body sent sliding down the wire would have crashed into them. Kicks. <laughs> Why? I believe he's right. The statues and wires are extremely close together. So the body, so the body would have collided with the statues. Hmm. What if they did collide? Wait, that's it. They did. They literally did. That's the. Whole point. Speaking of those statues, we still don't know how they Hello? were Hello? Yeah? Yeah? Not really. <clears throat> Anyways, hey. But if we assume the body crashed into them, a beer and phoenix. <laughs> Toppled over. That would also explain the loud sound we heard while we were in the waiting room. Oh, now that you mention it, you and Mr. Wright went out to the stage after you heard that sound, correct? What? <laughs> interesting. How very interesting. But may I ask just one question? Then why did you object? <laughs> when was it that you heard said sound? After the mock trial had started. Ooh, cutting out. Mr. Wright and I were practically bored to tears in the waiting room when- 
Precisely. That sound you heard did happen while the body was being moved. That would place it during the mock trial. The body wouldn't have been there the moment the mock trial started. See, right before the mock trial started, I saw the body. I completely forgot about that. Yes, you saw the blood, the body before the mock trial. Moved. If so, my claim that the body was moved during the mock trial doesn't hold water. Stupid contradiction. It's gonna get them, get me and I'm case killed. Hi, mom. Yeah, I saw it was left out when I got when I woke up. Oh, uh, okay. So you put it in the fridge? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh huh. Okay, there needs to come in the table. Senior gun. The focus was just on was on just three suspects because the body was moved before the mock trial. That has been the major premise thus far. Your assertion therefore contradicts the very foundation I'm of this case. So. Both sides are still still lack incontrovertible evidence. So should we not also treat the Golden Boy's testimony with some level of suspicion? Hmm, good point. Yeah. Yeah, but side. Betty's figured out the truth behind this case. That well, sorry. Read this one! Brave. No, it's not up to something else. The backers really were broken when the body hit them. But his statement about seeing the body before the monster is a big fat lie. Okay, Mr. O'Connor. Let's get to the bottom of this contradiction about when you saw the body. Look me straight in the eye and repeat your statement to me. Uh, like I said before, uh, before the mock trial, the body was, you know. I shall only say this once, Golden Boy. You had best tell us the truth and do it now. That is, if your head wishes to enjoy the continued companion of your body. Com co companionship? Whatever. Companionship. Yikes! Now out with it. Did you truly witness the body? Or were you just lying about it? Tell us! Well, which is it? I don't know where I got the from. I... You what? I... I... I never saw the body. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Lie in this court again and I'll charge you with perjury. There was no body on that stage. I've been lying about that this whole time. I... I'm sorry. Apology not accepted. Get out of here. You big lie for what it is. <laughs> Why would he lie to the, lie about this to begin with? Because I saw the murder. The base premise is that the body was moved before the mock trial has been overturned. I imagine this is an impact on both the defense and prosecution's case. Well, first I'd like to thank the prosecutor. This brings us on one step closer to the truth. Now, at least we know the body was moved using the wire and school banner. Indeed. Then much I shall concede, Sykes Donna. The body was moved as you stated and in the midst of the mock trial. Hmm, so both sides are satisfied then. <laughs> the body was moved before the mock trial, we have our three suspects. But if the move took place in the midst of the mock trial, it's an entirely different story. Alright, all three new suspects are in the mock trial. I guess some solid alibi. Objection! <laughs> How simplistic. Did you forget about the student in charge of the audio? Yeah. It is Junie. Amidst the mock trial, she was the one soul who could leave and re enter the lecture hall. What's this? Who's the person in charge of the audio? 
how could I forget? It was. I completely forgot about that. What's the deal here? Why is Trudy so large in this place? <laughs> Jennifer was also in charge of the audio. When he wasn't in a trial, she was in the audio control room dealing with the music. Indeed. The one who could enter the art room emits the mock trial to move the body. It was none other than the accused. Juniper Woods, for she was in charge of the audio! They really should have gotten more people involved with this. That stupid mock trial. They're leaving it all up to one person? That's crazy. Well, oh, yes, I see, that does make perfect sense! Mm -hmm. The accused crime isn't even deeper. Matter how you slice it, I'm cooked. Oh my god, that's lit. That's just that's such a Gen Z thing to say. <laughs> We're cooked. G god, I'm cooked. I'm cooked. Yeah, I thought Prosecutor Blackwell was on her side. At least on this issue. The twisted samurai strikes again. Twisted? It's more like dirty rodents. <laughs> Your baldness. It's time to put an end to this farce. The prosecution has presented a quite convincing case, but the defense has one last chance to voice any remaining objections. Well, Miss Sykes. What are you going to do? We have nothing left. Nothing. Nada. Ain't there. I've been trying to think of something, but I'm drawing a blank too. Poor Tony. Unless we figure out what's... We'll figure out something. There'll be... A objection... Objection, um, well, I object to- OBJECTION! Hey look, it's me, Phoenix Wright! <laughs> Hold it! Professor Means, I- I would guess- oh no, it's you. It's just you. <laughs> Stop right there. All ears to me! It's time you heard about the rare genius of Hugh O'Connor. She says the dumbest shit ever. Oh, what is going on here? What are you doing, Hugh? Oh, no. Listen and you will hear the secret behind my perfect crime. Why is he crying? <laughs> perfect. Crime! Oh, no, I think I know what he's trying to do here. Is he trying to confess? Serious deja vu. Didn't we just go through something like this yesterday? It was two weeks ago, but yeah. <laughs> yes, yes we did. This better not be another one of his enraging traps. The murder, the moving of the body, the cover-up, it all sprung from my brilliant mind. Well, go ahead, arrest me. The real killer is right before you. Order squared! I say, M -m -m Mr. O'Connor! We already confessed yesterday that earlier you recanted your confession! As if your mouth breathers could comprehend my genius. The end justifies the means. Now bow down and kneel. Kneel before my great and maddening intellect! Jackson. Can someone shut this kid up? Enough. There is the, the only thing maddening is the ign ignominy you bear for all to see. It's for the imposs- it, for it is impossible for you to have been the perpetrator behind this crime. There is no perfect crime, only a perfect alibi, for you were at the mock trial. And it is silly that I must remind you of this, but you were a participant the entire time. There shall be no mercy if you persist in hindering this trial with your silly little act. <laughs> it was actually my twin brother. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Prosecutor, calling that the perfect alibi is beyond competent. Your Honor, I'd like to take this opportunity to offer further testimony. I will now demonstrate the very moment of genius that transcended even perfection. <laughs> Can someone kill this guy? You won't believe this, but I used a bite. <laughs> I used Inspector Hosonaka Satoru. Oh my god. 
That wasn't the real me at the mock trial. That means I didn't almost lose. My body double almost did. I slipped out stealthily and made my double took care. Well, my double took care of the trial. I had a run of the campus. In short, I'm the killer. Juniper's innocent. Where is this body double? I have a question I was hoping the defense and prosecution might help answer. Is it just me, or does the witness's testimony make no sense at all? No, it's not just you, Your Honor. All I got from listening to that was a headache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was just plain weird, especially the whole thing about a body double. Don't bring it back. Oh, I'm relieved it's not just me and the prosecution. Your baldness, I summon an ambulance this instant. <laughs> Luciferitas has just collapsed. The witness no. is stark, raving mad. Hmm. Yes, I think that would be for the best. Now then, let's pretend that never happened and move on to my verdict. Hold it! You people don't believe me? It's not a matter of not believing you. <laughs> More along the lines of questioning your sanity. <laughs> Yeah, the funny farm just called. They want their genius back. <laughs> Objection! Shut your bye holes! The intellect of great genius transcends even logic! Oh, you best not say that. You best not say that. Besides, don't you guys have that weird device for testimony like this? Wait, it's not a weird device, and I don't waste them on ridiculous statements. I'm not giving you therapy. If I do, you're gonna pay thousands. Easy there, Tiger. Think of it this way. We don't want a verdict to be passed just yet. So how about we give Widget a try? Oh, this is against my better judgment. I would like to conduct a short therapy session. I'm charging him for it. For better judgment, I'm a judge and it's far beyond mine and I find it hard to say no. Prosecutor Blackwell, I trust you have no objection. Um, Prosecutor Blackwell... Where'd he go? Uh, the prosecution, the prosecutor said, Rubbish! We will be out on a stroll, then left with Detective Fulbright. No, he didn't. He went with, with, the, with the prosecutor Ford. How does, how does he get away with stuff like that? Then? Uh, then I'll interpret that as to meaning as no explicit objections. Uh, Miss Sykes, you may proceed with your therapy session. <laughs> I've seen my share of crazy trials, but this one takes the cake. Well, you, you were the defense attorney and stuff goes on, right? Yeah, well, listen, okay? So many things happen, and it's not, not everything is the same. Here we go, boy. Oh, what's going on? Happy? You won't believe this, but I... <laughs> That wasn't the real me in the mock trial. That is so bad. Let me <laughs> go back. This is so goofy. When in the case closed, Detective Conan am I looking at here? <laughs> that means I didn't almost lose. My body double did. <laughs> His body double was Sebastian the best. I slipped out stealthily while I took care of the trial. While my body double, I had a run of the campus. In short, I'm the killer. Juniper's innocent. Ew. What am I supposed to be looking for? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I gotta put my headphones on for this. I don't- what? I don't get it. Confession is overflowing with happiness. Maybe he enjoys thinking about how mouth- how us mouth- What did I- oh! How us mouth breathers can't comprehend his genius. <clears throat> this just way beyond me. He seems to take a deep pain in the level of delight in his profession. PUV Mycroft Sholmes. <laughs> no. Nah. Even a normal level of delight would be weird for a confession. 
Then again, he's not what I'd call normal. Why are you confessing? Who is this really for? <laughs> well, your girlfriend. I feel like that's the key to this Rose! out of solution. And he's 25, but ew. She's 18, but I still yeah. think that's weird. Pretending to be a high schooler. He's 25. Oh, Connor. No. Juniper. Woods. Yeah. Dude, come on! <laughs> Mr. Connor, yesterday, 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 yesterday you said that you didn't really care about Miss Woods anymore. Take your time, Athena. Pronounce it slowly. Yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, jeez. I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you. I don't really care about her anymore. Why? Where did the what go? <laughs> yeah, well, Juniper reported my secret to Professor Court. Secret? Oh, right. She wanted nothing to do with me because I had disappointed her. That's why I don't care about her anymore. I was never trying to protect her. My confession was always about one thing and one thing only. The truth! Yeah, yeah. Mr. O'Connor, you feel great happiness. Happiness and the fact that you might help set Miss Wood free. So much so that it overshadowed all your other emotions. What are you? I can hear it clearly now, Mr. O'Connor. The discord you've been trying to suppress. People don't normally feel like you do when you confess. Let's look back a hundred years and there's one other case, but that's it. So he was really trying to protect Juniper? Yes, I'm sure of it. She's feelings for that reason. <laughs> Only at 90? That means it's confession day. Uh... Oh, finally figured out the obvious, have we? Hi, I'm back. Hi, Prosecutor Blackwell, you're back! I just said that. The confession was not but lies, save for the part about being in the mock trial. Can we all agree now that the killer is the one in charge of the audio, i.e. the accused? I think when you have taken the longest stroll. No, you haven't unraveled the genius of my body double trick yet. You can't be serious. You really expect us to believe you had a body double? Ah! Yes, yes, I do! Okay, well, it's not that far-fetched, I'm gonna be honest. But if you think I didn't, then prove it. <laughs> Either we quit here and Juniper is found guilty, or we play along with Hugh's delusion. I'm looking you for real. Let's go with the least worst choice. But first, let me update his testimony. You won't believe this. He, why is he surprised at that? Maybe he does. What? Hello? Why is there nothing? Connor, oh. this emotion is inconsistent with your testimony. Okay, I guess not. Uh, I think it's the first one. If Juniper is innocent, why are you sad? I'm gonna press. I'm gonna. No, dead. are you kidding me? Didn't you press that already? No, I didn't. I suffered from short term memory loss. <laughs> You won't believe this, because I don't believe it either! It. What? Awesome. It's not this either. What? Okay, I believe it's the lack of any emotion here. It. Yeah, see? Check it out. I didn't almost lose, he said. Very odd. You exhibited happiness the entire time, except during the statement. Uh, 
You don't know when to give up. Wait, now that I think about it. Don't make- no, stop, stop making stuff up. When I left the lecture hall... Stop, oh my god! It was during Professor Mean's pre-trial speech. That's when I moved the body. Then I slipped back in just before the verdict. So you're saying you were the mo there the moment your double was about to lose. Yes, I was! Naturally, I wasn't happy when I saw that. In any case, I was at the far end of the lecture hall behind the screen. Figured no one would see me if I came in and went through the doors there. Sex, don't know how much longer will you indulge him in this charade? While it's true that none of the audience might have seen him go through either of these doors. Faculty seats on the balconies are a different story and have a splendid view. Ha! <laughs> Thought you could do better than that. The lawyer's bench is on the right side, facing the front of the hall. Is the door on the right side, near the lawyer's bench. It means my movements were only visible to someone in the left balcony seat. The seat was empty at the time, which is only natural. After all, it belonged to Professor Corden, as we all know, she was already dead by then. Can you see something? This one. I have no idea where this contradiction is going. But I don't have any other moves at this point. Guess I'll just have to follow and see where this takes me. He <laughs> said the left balcony seat was empty. Or was it really? I saw it with my own eyes. It was definitely empty. Uh -huh. What about this diagram? So that means... According to this, Professor Means was supposed to be seated in the left balcony seat. So he, he is the killer. Now I'm right. What do you mean? So I thought, okay, so... Because... Um, Court's thing was definitely empty because she was dead. And he w is supposed to be there, but he wasn't because he said he was empty. So that means he could have been off killing someone. Killing... Moving the body. Ooh, okay. He would have been standing there in his seat addressing the students and fact fa faculty. Yeah, no, this could be right. Only eight. Oh my god, how much more are we gonna do this? You do no one any favors by exposing the falsities of his confession. I've told plenty of lies so far, but this part is true, I tell you. There is nobody in the left balcony seat. You gotta believe me. Seem like he's lying this time. Apollo? I d no, nothing. I'm not a human lie detector. Yeah. What? You're not? No. Why would you think that? Okay, Mr. O'Connor, let's have you testify again. But this time, don't spare any details. You got it. I'll repeat it as many times as you'd like. I mean, my ingenious escape act warrants repeating, considering I'm the real killer. Really care about whether that seat was empty or not. <laughs> Pretty <bad. laughs> I'm tired of this bullshit. <laughs> I should be reading this. Why is he like this, bro? I detected powerful sadness and fear right after you said this part. It's as if you said something you shouldn't have. What's wrong with you? You shouldn't reveal a person's inner feelings for all to see. Mr. O'Connor, it's you who is revealing your inner emotions by the way you speak. Plus, I have a good idea about why you're feeling sad. Gah, you're a horrible person! Can you just leave me be? He said that you went through the empty audio control room. But that's not true, is it? Maybe Juniper was there? There was someone who returned from there once Professor Means finished his speech. 
And that someone who was in the audio control room was... Juniper? I know you realized there was a problem with your statement as you were saying. That's why you felt so uneasy. If the audio control room really was empty, that would mean Miss Woods was roaming around the campus. Ah. Uh -huh. Mr. O'Connor, if you really want to protect Miss Woods, just tell the truth. If you believe in her, revealing the truth is, is the same as protecting her. Juniper's innocent. That's the truth. But in this dark age of the law, the truth can't be easy can be easily twisted to serve anyone's needs. When the end justifies the means, your only choice is to fight back with lies. Is there something I can do to make him recant his false testimony? <laughs> I fear nothing now that I have lost everything. Go ahead, Prosecutor Blackwell. Cut me down if you wish. <laughs> I never thought you would ask. With you gone, we may swiftly proceed to a verdict. Poor accountant down at the attention center. Hugh O'Connor. In deference to your valor, I will limit your suffering with one clean blow. Could you wait just one moment before you cut him down? Silence. Do not come between me and a set. Oh. <laughs> I never learned about this in law school. Do not come between a samurai and his foe. Well, unless you're, uh, do you know, scan that of all Careful, prosecutor. Remember that shocking experience you had last time. I, I, no. messed, I messed up my words. <laughs> Very well, golden boy may live for now. Enough already, Mr. O'Connor. Miss Woods would never want you to protect her this way. She values the friendship between the three of you more than anything. Objection! That's w that's where you're wrong. She doesn't feel anything for me now. <laughs> but what does it matter anymore? I might as well tell you everything. This is no doubt news to you. But I'm not and never was a genius. Sorry, but I already knew. Me too. And don't forget me! Oh, in all fairness, it was pretty obvious. This is- You see, he's really trying to be Sebastian the best. You'll never be the best. I thought he was a genius at first, but... This is a woman. Sad, the stuff you said is crazy. Ah! I need to rub it in. Just shut up and listen. It all started several days ago. I accidentally learned that my parents have been paying good money for my grades. He really wants to be Sebastian the best. But, but that's... That's bribery! But the bribery wasn't his idea. All my perfect scores were the product of cold, hard cash, not genius. He really wants to- oh god. Even worse when I confronted my parents about it over the phone. Ah. Juniper overheard me. Oh my! I had a terrible misunderstanding! I've been living a lie, I don't know what else there is to say- Oh my god! Just when I- th just when I had like a 30 minute like rant about why Hugh O'Connor and Sebastian the Best are different. I'm no genius. I'm the com I'm completely worthless. Logic chess. Haya. Haya. He gets adopted by Edward. No. A perfect zero. I don't want yeah, him anywhere near. I don't want him anywhere near. My God. Okay, well, no one. No one cares. Did you say? Did you say? Uh, Hugh. Even so, I still wanted to make it up to Juniper for disappointing her like that. So that's why I wanted to clear her name by pinning the blame on me. I mean, she probably hates me now. So it'd be a relief for her to see me locked away. But you're trying to help her. Why'd you testify against her? You're the one who told me to tell the truth yesterday. So I thought if I did, I would help her. 
He wasn't trying to provoke us? Looks like we seriously misunderstood him in more ways than one. I took a tension from there yesterday. She knew he was in tears when she opened up to me. I was very proud of that. But the truth is, the friendship between the three of them is still solid, still rock solid. There was something that could help me prove that to you. <laughs> We've been having proof of our friendship. As long as our friendship lasts, we can bet we'll be carrying them around. I know, that's Athena. I don't speak. I know. What about the proof of friendship they mentioned? Wondering where that is. It's the... I didn't buy it. It's literally that. It's a hand. That's a symbolic gesture of friendship. Don't you know this? It's handmade. There is only one like it in the world. Uh, oh. Hello? Why is there sad music playing? Maybe it's... That's definitely it. A band around his neck. How does he take it off? Mr. O'Connor. That band around your neck. That's your proof of friendship, isn't it? <laughs> proof of friendship? Is that anything like proof of purchase barcode? In court, evidence is everything. That's why the three friends created friendship bands. It's the evidence that proves their friendship. What is playing right now in this music? Woohoo! How very interesting and chic! If they have doubts about their friendship, they can look to the proof they have on hand. That's why Mr. O'Connor's hand always goes to his neck when he, when he is pressured. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Proves he still has feelings of friendship towards the other two. It doesn't matter if I wear it. If those two... But they feel the same way too. I know they wear their friendship band somewhere. Tony and Robin must both feel the same as he. I just know it. Everything he has said leads me to believe that. In fact, he may also have just told me that the others wear their friendship. Where they're easy. Where, where they're, they're easy, easy to touch. Um, I suppose. I all we have to do is think back to their testimonies. Ready? Okay. I'm not. This. Mix Newman told them. Mix Newman holds their arm when pressured. And Miss Woods holds her wrist. I know Miss Woods very well. She would never abandon her friendship with you over something like this. And taking the blame for her will only succeed in making her terribly sad. <sighs> Ow. Did he slam his head on the, the witness stand? What's going on here? Oh, hi, Miss Robin. Oh. <laughs> Robin, those bands of friendship that you made. Just for the three. Is this Hugh's voice? Ugh. Is it Hugh? Why is he so? forgotten about them, but not me. <laughs> What's going on? Hugh. Hmm? Huh? This hey, is... Hugh. hey, I'm here. Did you know that? <laughs> oh, this makes me so sad. Why does he have a call? I should have known better than to doubt my best friends. Who are you? I feel like I know you. <laughs> he sounds hey, like Clement you? from Pokemon. <laughs> Where are those 
the lawyers. Hey, there you go. I didn't kill anyone. And I didn't have any body double. I didn't move the body. I didn't even see it. And it may look like I'm speed reading. Send in the art of mastering the bar exam, but I haven't read a single word! Hmm? Well, you could've fooled me. In fact, you're dead. You. So, Miss Sykes, can I place my trust in you? You should have done that in the first place. I'm going to save Junie. So, yes, you can place, place your trust in me. I hate this game. Then, you might understand the witnesses recanting his confession. Yes. I must round about trial. Much prefer the turnabout variety myself. Hey, did someone say turnabout? Get out of here, Phoenix Wright. Now we are back to the fact that there was but one suspect who left an alibi, which is in the end. The truth you've been seeking this entire time. So we're back to square one? Now I'm exhausted and depressed. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter at this point, but I might as well update the mood matrix. Okay, here we go. Huh? What's this mean? Further resistance is futile. The time for a verdict is nigh. Please, wait. What sort of devilry are you up to now? What if our client wasn't the only one without an alibi? The trial would continue, right? It's Professor Means. It's Professor Means. Well, yes, I suppose it would. After such a thorough investigation, does such a person really exist? Come on, 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 come on! Yes, they found something. It may seem like a major roundabout. Come on, Athena, just say it. Please. Mr. Connor Sesame has cracked this case. What's this? <laughs> Did you say the line? There's no more noise. He was telling the truth now. Oops, I didn't notice it. During the mock trial, the balcony seat opposite him really was empty. Which now means there is one person unaccounted for. Bye. Besides, she only the only other per the, the only other person left. But yes. No alibi. Take that. Take that. Balcony seat was empty. Not much is true, isn't it, Mr. O'Connor? That's right. How many more times do I have to say it? So basically, Professor Means wasn't where he was supposed to be during the mock trial. Silence. Need I remind you of your last soul in the lecture hall and heard him deliver a speech? I know. And that's not in this view here. Oh! It's a recording! What? It's a recording! Your- your stream? No, 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 no. Okay. The- his speech. Oh. Let me get- Now let me explain how a speech could be given from an empty seat. It was- Pre-recorded. What if the speech was pre-recorded? That's the only way. The speech could have been delivered from an empty balcony seat. You have me like, here, there. Objection! Who is this? That was a really wild one, too. Wait, are you accusing Professor Means? That's insane! I mean, he's the one who gave me the tape recorder. Take this to the police, he said, and tell them you found it. Oh, thanks, Hugh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait a second. Mr. O'Connor, did you just say the Professor Means gave that phony recording to you? Phony! 
The defense will refrain from hurling unsubstantial allegations! Well, I said he gave it to me, but what do you mean it's phony? Well, who could have seen this development? Me, me, me. Me, I read the wiki. Me, I am a good detective. I didn't actually read the wiki for this case, but I watched clips of Blackwell being stuck. The voice shouting, You heard Gone of us recorded on this tape? Was dubbed unto you using a line of client said in the mock trial video. Why this? This is an extremely crucial piece of evidence! Um... Uh oh, the background's gone. Professor Means gave Hugh the phony tape. If that's really true, then Professor Means has guilt written all over him. Oh god, the segment gonna take so much. Your Honor, the defense moves to call Professor Aristotle Means to the stand. Silence! No, you shut up! No! <laughs> the seat was never empty. It was but an oversight by a dullard of a witness. An inmate who was formerly a surgeon once told me something. He said it's often all too easy to overlook critical symptoms. Well, we're going to overlook this for a moment. We're not going to overlook this oversight. If his speech was pre-recorded, the basis for suspecting a client would be shattered. Let's check what Professor means, and see whether the empty seat was a witness oversight. Why don't we just- Hey, Apollo, did you see the seat? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. You're useless! Sorry. A verdict without first looking into that would be inconceivable. That's enough, both of you! Now here's my opinion on the matter! Objection! Nobody cares! Well, a surgeon overlooking in critical symptoms is a problem. A witness's oversight, too, must not be overlooked. Thus, as to the matter of whether Professor Means was or was not in his faculty seat, I believe we must ask the professor himself. Did someone say professor? Wrong case, wrong timeline. Are you like, okay? I agree. Professor Means should be here in the gallery today. <laughs> Do as you please. Okay. Jumps over the counter and just... Why are you- why are you hitting Hugh O'Connor? <laughs> oh, I love this your moment. name and occupation for the record? I Certainly. I am Aristotle- Aristotle Means. Okay, I teach the lawyer course at Bemis Legal Academy. And let me add that while I welcome any opportunity to assist with the trial, I don't care for this undue suspicion. Don't worry, Professor. We're just interested in the mock trial video right now. We just need to take another look at that speech you gave. Can we count on your cooperation in this? Nope. Very well, if that's all you're interested in. Please proceed, Miss uh, Sykes. We need to find some sort of evidence that shows this speech was pre-recorded. Alright, I believe we're ready. Let's roll the video. Good afternoon, I'd like to start by thanking you for coming here today. The mock trial crown jewel event at the school festival will begin shortly. When I was a student, I too could hardly wait for this day to come. Well, you can't even see it. It's out of the frame. Oh no. I forgot how long and boring a speech was. Mm. <laughs> Wake me up once this is over. No fair. Apollo, wake me up when this is over. Huh? Mr. Wright, wake me up when this is all over. He's, He's sleeping asleep. in the gallery! <laughs> <laughs> Experiences over here that have a powerful and profound effect on our adults. Something, 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 something. Ah, you there, wake up, pay attention. I'm awake, I'm awake. Isn't that right, Your Honor? <laughs> ah, what? I'm awake too! Wide, wide awake, <laughs> see? <laughs> Once again, our pure white lady justice will be watching over you today. Ah, got you! I got you! I got you! I got him. Jail. Arrest him. 
That's about it. One of my better speeches, if I do say so myself. Arrest him. Arrest him now. I even saw some of our students with tears in their eyes. He's obviously not familiar with the phrase bored to tears. Listen, Sykesona, if you have subjected me to this <laughs> epic study intending without purpose, tedium. Oh Talk about feast up on your tongue after I've cut it out. <laughs> you were asleep the whole time. No, I, I wasn't. Realized. Does that sleepy sprite look so bad next to his, to, to Simon's sleeping sprite too? Oh my god! I forgot to read the line. Because he's under the desk. I forgot to read Can the I line. Please... Go ahead. Can I please hear that last part again? No, because I forgot to read the line. Once again, our pure white lady Justice will be walking out. Uh -huh. See, see, see. Thank God it didn't make yeah. me do that. I finally found what we needed. <laughs> Professor means I have only one question about your speech. Why does that last part we just heard contradict with this? Why do I have to point it out if I'm asking him? The professor said the pure white lady justice would be watching over them. The lady justice in the video isn't even close to being white. It's as gold as gold can be. I'm sure I can wrap my jaw around that just its authenticity. <laughs> I didn't say it was made of gold, Your Honor. Now it's true that the statue is pure white. But it broke before the mock trial began. The one you see here, it's its replacement. Oh, well, it's a shame on every count. Ironically, this golden statue sticks out like a sore thumb compared to the white one. Meaning the professor wouldn't have even made a mistake in its color, even if he'd been present. It seems that I have caused some confusion, but it was merely an oversight on my part. The statement was in the middle of the room. Statue! How could you not know what it looked like? Uh, uh, whoa, wrong voice. Well, I was in my balcony seat. Furthermore, the statue had previously been white. And I'm afraid this isn't sufficient evidence on a big speech being pre-recorded. We had our answer long ago. The accused was the only one to leave the lecture hall. No, wait. There's got to be something to prove that the speech was pre-recorded. According to the mock trial video, the speech started here. It was 20, it was 10 minutes and ended here. It's a little over 10 minutes, but I doubt anyone wants to be tortured again. It's, it was only a little over 10 minutes. Not like forever. How did you figure out how long it was? The timer in the corner, Athena. Come on. All I have to do is subtract the time the speech started from the time it subtracted. Yep. That's how math works. The speech goes from 10 minute mark to the 2035. Again? I swear I've seen this same interval. I've seen the evidence. Woohoo. Where is it? No. Autopsy report? No. Between 6 and 8 p.m. That's in the whole hour. Is it this? The clock. No. Nothing else really has a time, or maybe it's this. Nope. Oh, yeah, look. Time. It's corner, but it doesn't yeah, make but sense. It's, night. it's two minutes. Um. Do you remember the 21st wait, night wait, what about of September? The, wait, what about the thing, the recorder? Actually, I don't know. No, it doesn't have a time on it, though. Oh god, I'm gonna save. Maybe there's a way for me to use a pre-speech time to pre-record the reference. Speech... For me to use the speech time to show that it was pre-recorded. Okay. 
Is it, do I just present the tape recorder? <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm... Um, okay, I'm fine with losing this, actually. My brain is not working. Okay, what? Is it the pictures? It's, it's surely not. Surely not. Ten... 10.30... What, what did you say? 10.35. Don't do auto. No. 10.35. 10. 10. What about the tape recording? Ah! Well, I would like the court to take a look at this. I'm going to save now. I'm at two left. This is the first time I'm getting I'm getting risky with Apollo Justice trilogy. And this is the voice recording analysis. The voice print analysis that proves the voice on the tape recorder was. Yes, but didn't we just establish that the voice on the tape recorder was a fabrication? We did. But uh, what I'd like to focus on is the noise that is also there. Noise. You're making an awful lot of noise there, Council. Kazuma, get out of here! <laughs> yes, the, the defense believes it resulted when the tape's previous recording was erased. <laughs> what do you hope to prove by that? The length of the noise is what's, is what's important. 10 minutes and 35 seconds long in all. And what did the timestamp read at the moment when Mr. Professor began his speech? Hmm, that would be exactly 10. Now let's fast forward this long-winded exercise and board him to the end. <laughs> Okay, stop the video stamp now read 2035. Could it be numbers for some reason? Mm -hmm. Based on this, we know the time it took for the speech alone. Right, subtract 10 minutes and you get 1035. Hmm? 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Right, 10 minutes and 35 seconds. The same as a nose nose? Noise, noise. on a tape recording. Nose! There's a nose here! Smell it out! <laughs> I assume you all understand what this means. Professor Means' pre-recorded speech had been where the noise is now. He couldn't have gotten another one? Conjecture? You seem rather confident considering this is a mere happenstance match of numbers. Objection! Numbers are never coincidences! This is Ace Attorney! Was it really just numbers? <laughs> December 20. <laughs> Lab is continuing their study of the tape. So far, they found signs of overdubbing. It's going to take a bit longer to recover the audio that was erased. Clavier, get in here. Herlock Holmes, Clavier. Ooh. The police are analyzing the noise as we speak. Um. Okay, I was looking at my bingo card. It won't be long until we know what was originally there. Now I'm sure of it. The professor was trying to create an alibi with the recording. Professor? By pinning the crime on Junie. Professor? Why is there a British man in court? Well, he's not getting away with it. Not on my watch. It's Clive Dove. I believe you are well aware of my method methodology. If Juniper were the perpetrator, I would vigorously defend her as per my word. And to that purpose, I offered to be her lawyer. Alas, look what's happened. Well, I've stated our obvious deductions derived from evidence and testimony. Did someone say deductions? Why is there a British man here in, in, in Japan, California? You mentioned deductions, and I appear. That's how this works. 
You're old. You're supposed to be dead. Shut up. I can defy physics and universal laws. Everything else. Truth be told, I had no intention of testifying. I had been keeping quiet for Juniper's sake. But now that you cast this blame upon me, I have no choice but to reveal the truth. Mm -mm. This doesn't sound good. I'll reveal the truth behind why I had to pre-record my speech before the mock trial. I was looking for Professor Court. My Professor Means always say what I mean, and mean what I say by all means. Shut up. Uh, here we go. When the defendant came to me with what she said was very important and by necessity secret. She asked me to pre-record my speech and come to the audio room during the mock trial. To her confess to the murder and ask if I can... <laughs> okay. Okay. She also said that I'd become an accomplice after losing my alibi due to the pre-recording. When I said I would protect Juniper, I meant it because it's the humane thing to do. Oh my, so you're saying the defendant threatened you? This has to be a lie. I mean, everything about this lines up too perfectly to be true. On this most consequential of occasions, let me simply be frank with you. Juniper has truly taken heart to my teachings. It states the end justifies the means. I don't- uh, Athena. I don't believe you. Me neither. When she asked me to defend her, she said I must also provide her two friends innocent. Prove her two friends- Her two friends! The witnesses! Correct. You are Connor and Robin Newman. But to ensure all three walked free. All three were to achieve their dream. That was the result of Juniper was seeking. And she was even willing to threaten me, her own professor to that end. <laughs> you no doubt had high praise for her ruthless tactics. Yes, well that is why I vowed to vigorously defend her despite her threatening me. There was a time when lawyers merely sought the truth if they wished for victory in court. But alas, those days are over. <laughs> they were never there to begin with. For real. Now, in defense of justice, order, and all that is good, the end justifies the means. Wait, do you mean me? No, not you, justice. Justice. M me? Or no, no, not you. I'm so sick of hearing that phrase. Though it truly grieves me so, I must tell you this. Forsake the truth and its victory you seek. Steal yourself for this new courtroom re reality. That doesn't. He's got a great dragon knows this among the pressing ideas in here. <laughs> Laughing at the dark age of the law. Since he's already surrounded surrendered to the darker age of the law, it's up to me to fight it. Okay, I hate I hate this game. Why so silent sex domo? Something the matter. This is a court of law. It's no place for long winded talks about idealistic principles. That's why I'm going to let the evidence do the talking. Let's not get carried away now, Miss Sykes. I will not have- I will not do- it will- it will not do to have you attempting to discredit my doctrine. Do not force me to rectify the situation. I'm not going to rectify it. Only if I lose a new win, that is. What are we doing? Oh, we're cross-examining. That's what we're doing. Ah! All right. The defendant came to me with what she said, but a very important that 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 she asked me to pre-record my speech. Okay, I'll just press. I doubt our client could have come to you with something like that. You have a point there. If only Professor Court had been alive, I suspect Juniper would have gone to her instead. So our client came to talk to you after Professor Court was dead? Let's go through this step by step, shall we? First, Juniper came to me that day. She asked me to pre-record. Are you suggesting it was our client who told you to fake an alibi? 
You have every reason to be surprised. I too was shocked when she told me that. Simply put, Juniper has a secret that she wished to protect that badly. Are you kidding me? That fight couldn't be further from the truth. The problem is, how am I going to expose it? <sighs> it was an earnest request from an outstanding student. How could I possibly have refused? Did you consider that a threat? Yes, but it's now it's now you to whom she has passed her demands on to. It's like you must realize that you too are being used by Juniper. What? Your Honor, I ask that you too do not let her feign weakness and innocence fool you. Juniper Woods is quite clever and extremely tough. And perhaps most important of all, she is a fervent follower of my teachings. Gotcha. No one's ever gonna listen to you. Honor, the witness testimony is nothing but an attack on our client's character. Very well, objections. Oh, very well, objection sustained, sustained. So be it. Nevertheless, the fact that she threatened me is immutable. She also said I'd become an accomplice after losing my alibi. How could you overlook such a threat? As a teacher, it's your duty to discipline students. Yes, well, perhaps I do have some serious reflection to do on this matter. I suppose it was just wishful thinking on my part. I wanted to believe that Juniper hadn't actually committed murder and that she wasn't meant she hadn't meant to threaten me. Really, please do explain. <laughs> Long had I awaited Oh does the witness realize what he's saying? You didn't let me finish. Surely you must have seen the true meaning in my words. I'm merely saying true to what I teach, and my methods are but a reflection of the times. Oh, wow, his brave thinking is really warped. But I haven't heard of any inconsistencies yet. I wouldn't be so sure. Really? The more he tries to avoid logical inconsistencies in his testimony, the more likely we'll see inconsistencies between his actions and words. Such a dark age in which we live. And they with Nokia phones and <laughs> <laughs> mail. <laughs> and there is much I would like to say on the matter. But when I said I would protect Juniper. You were trying to protect our client? Yeah, right. I'll say anything to pin the blame on Juni. What a frightful look. I would ask that you not glare at me so. I have nothing but admiration for how Juniper was willing to go so far as to threaten me. <laughs> why is this guy a teacher? That's why I'm protecting her by any means possible. She's been a model student. Why are you trying to pin the blame on her? I'm going to show that when he's, when he's trying isn't what he's really thinking. You cannot possibly overturn my claim, so it isn't about time isn't it about time you admitted defeat? After all, if my unassailable logic is not truth, then what is it? What is? Oops. I'm gonna find a hole in it. If he thinks I'm gonna give in to his pack of lies, he's got another thing coming. I'm gonna find a hole in this story. It's the last thing I do. It's justice time. You it's <laughs> justice time. I, I love Apollo Justice when the part where he said it's justice time and then he justiced all over the place. Even though he's got me, hello, hello. Even though he's rotten to the core, he's a total pro. I mean, that all made perfect sense. Yeah, but you can't believe a word he says. Is this the Allegro cross examination? Because it doesn't sound like it. He's making things up as he goes along. No trip on his own work yet. I wonder if how consistently the professor's testimony matches up with his actual. Okay, so, uh, I don't get any new things. The defendant came to me, and had to be secret. Pre-record my speech. Dreamer confessed to the murder. She said she'd become an accomplice. She said I'd become an accomplice. 
And I said I'd protect Juniper and... It's because it's the humane thing to do. Oh my god, what am I doing? Time to take a break. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that. You hear that? I'm tired. I'm tired of his bullshit. Maybe it's time to take a break, bro. Juniper confessed. What's in my court record? Okay. Diagram. Voice print analysis. So. Hugh, scrap. Or do justice. Tape recorder. Autopsy report. The all the murder weapon. Junie's fingerprints. Top secret mock trial. Mm. For me to pre-record my speech and come to the audio room during the mock trial. Juniper confessed. And ask that I get her declared innocent in court. Um, oh my god. Was, he, he would be an accomplice. It's the humane thing to do. Um, oh my gosh. Um, um... Record the speech. She asked me to pre record the speech. She asked me to pre record the speech. What does the tape recorder say? The what? Tape recorder. It says it was identified as a fake. Professor Means used Hugh to pass it on to the police. Oh, wait. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't he just like. No? Okay. Um, let's load this. Um, <laughs> oh, what was that? It was the main thing to do. Oh, wait a minute, because he did, he literally gave it to Hugh. To use again, okay. Yeah, that makes, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, oh, let's go. Let me get this straight. You were trying to help Miss Woods? <laughs> That's nothing more than a bold-faced lie. No offense, Your Honor. Such defamation of my character in your hero's follicles, Your Honor. This is an outrage. Miss mm, Sykes will clarify her statement, but leave my hair follicles out of it this <laughs> time. Yes, of course, Your Honor. Now please take a look at this. The witness gave this tape report this tape to Mr. O'Connor. Then he slyly whispered, Take this to the police and tell them you found it. There was no whispering slyly or otherwise involving. I simply did that out of kindness. The tape contained our client's voice. In short, it is incredibly damaging evidence. Why would it exist in if why would it even exist if the witness wasn't trying to pin the murder on her client? The music's getting better. Come on, we caught you, man. Is it... They say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but not yours. Wait till you see what happens. You never had good intentions. Only nice to protect yourself with while blaming another. You, Professor, are the embodiment of the dark age of the law. He literally said that from the moment we met him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're just realizing it now. Objection. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> Why, you little? You dare call my teachings and methods lies? Yeah. Oh. Oh, hello. Ooh, what's happening? Themis Legal Academy is a proud institution. It's the most powerful in the world. 
You'll never forget what true education lowering means once I'm through with you. Look, can you hear the theme playing along with you right now? It's literally the dark age of the law. <laughs> huh? That's what it means. It's with your hair. Why does he have a mohawk now? Quiet! No talking in class! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Eyes and ears up here, everyone. Homeroom is now in session. We will begin with roll call. Athena Sykes. Huh? Oh, uh, here? Apollo Justice. I'm fine. Uh, I, I mean, I'm here. Fool! The proper response is here without any extensions information. Uh, it's, I mean, here. Next, your honor. Here. She class, that's the proper way to answer. <laughs> Simon Blackwell. Fuck you. No! <laughs> I said Simon Blackwell. Are you here or not? Hi. He fell asleep. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? Well, then I'll just mark you absent. Now get out of my class this instant. Get out. Very well, if that is what you wish. Who am I to defy my homeroom teacher? <laughs> is that such a good idea? Prosecutor Blackwell is free of his shackles. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens I was a member of my high school's disciplinarian committee. But is that really so shocking? <laughs> Constabulary lap talk to teacher's pet. What a malleable mutt you are, Fulbright. Very good, Bobby. You just earned a gold star and a promotion to head disciplinarian. All right, class is now in session. Uh, why do I have the sudden urge to go to the nurse's office with a stomach ache? <laughs> Pay attention, I am not the killer. Juniper is. This will be on the next test, so you had better be listening. Professor, he graded the phony tape to pin the blame on Juniper. Plus, you were the only one who could have moved the body during the mock trial. Objection! God, I have to watch this animation every time. Yes. Please note, I was not at school. Athena, you disappoint me so that I think you would label me as a murderer. Now pay attention! The murder occurred on 23rd, 6, between 6 and 8 p.m. I was already at home by that time, so how could I have been involved with this crime? Professor Mainzi, can you really prove you have already gone home by that time? Objection! Can you prove that I was still at school? Can you prove it doesn't make sense? <laughs> mm -mm. No, I can't. <laughs> so you admit it. Well, you just end <laughs> an extra credit for your honesty. But you've also earned your laboratory cleaning duties until you graduate! Oh. I do that enough for the office. office. Objection. He said this. Oh! Rubber. No way, man! I totally object! Thank god, a character that's not me. Robin? I can't believe I fell for Professor Silverton lies. Why you? How dare you talk about your teacher like that? I'm not listening to you anymore, man. No way, no how. Now I have a confession to make. You know those two statues that were on stage. I didn't make them all by myself. The statues on stage? Do I want to know where this is ordered? Not really. I was able to finish one of them. But the last bell rang before I had time for the other one. So, I asked Professor Means to make it for me. Is he a- what? In other words, the professor was there on the stage after the last bell. Hey, that's- this is just like- You know how- how Robin didn't speak up until Professor Means literally lied right to the court? That's just like when Keijiro Ryusei didn't speak up until yes, 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 Hugo yes, Devlin yes, yes, told a yes, yes, stri yes, lie yes, straight yes, to the court. And it would have been way past 7 p.m. before he could have finished. 
Professor Memes was still at school. This is, well, this is incredibly important testimony. <laughs> the professor told me, I'll take care of it. I thought my parents would let me be an artist if I said I'd made both statues myself. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm not telling the truth. <laughs> Poppin. Objection! Quick, let somebody get this juvenile delinquent out of my sight! Simon! You're an <laughs> among the delinquents! <laughs> Do something! <laughs> yeah! Who's in charge of the class bed around here? <laughs> not interested. But if you want a class in swordsmanship, I'm your man. <laughs> I'm not your man. Of course, only real blades will do. No sword at school, all weapons will be confiscated! Kazuma Asogi? Yeah! <laughs> nurse! Nurse! Where's your school nurse when you need one? It would seem like Sonoma seeks the showdown, Professor. In which case, you do well to draw your staff, quick as lightning. Are you well? Then I will just. <laughs> said no pets allowed. I will just have to prove my innocence myself! Which you should be doing in the first place. The real lesson begins in second period. Prepare to be served old school style! What's that? Uh, never mind. Your testimony, please. <laughs> Can we just arrest him? Please. Now pay attention. Robin took over half of the day to complete one statue. I overfinished most of the statue between 7 and 8.30. The defendant Juniper saw two statues with her own eyes at 8.30. Completing the statue so quickly meant I could no not leave the stage for a single second. How could I have possibly had time to go to the room and commit murder? You're saying the defendant's on the finished statues. Precisely. She said so herself at the detention center yesterday. Her defense team was there and heard her say so too, so don't try to deny it now. That evening, I went back to my dressing room to get something I'd forgotten there. It was well after the last bell rang. I'd say maybe around 8.30. That's when I noticed that both, stat both stage statues were finished. They were quite large and they were each covered with a white sheet, but I could tell. All right, the, pro the professor was there when the matter came up. That matter came up. Before I address the professor's charges, I have a question for Robin. How hard would it be to complete oh, a he... statue like that in one and a half hour? Um, oh, there, and a half hours. It would probably take me at least twice as L-O-N-N-G, L-O-N-G. So personally, I think it would be incredibly difficult to finish in that shorter time. Oh, God. That didn't exactly help her case. But he won't get off that easy. He's bound to stumble over his own slippery means. Means, you say? That's my name. Shut up. You shut up. I'm testifying. Pay attention! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so ready to end this. Robin took over half a day to complete. How could you have time to go to the art room and commit murder? Bup, 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 between six and eight. <clears throat> when did you start? The murder took place between six and eight. Can you just press all of them? <laughs> so I'm just gonna, like, okay. Oh, it's a bar thing. Because, um,. It says between 6 and 8, and he said, I finished it between 7 and 8. Objection. No, okay, so I guess not. Um, fine, I'll press everything. No, wait, no, wait, can you not? I don't, I don't know. You saw it too, uh huh. Completing the statue so quickly. Wait, what did that last statement say? That one? He how he no. didn't have time to go to the art room and commit murder. The other one. Uh, he was on the stage the entire time. Oh, this is the like this is the Allegro one. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't leave not for a single second. 
this picture was taken at 7... 7.05. We need justice. What's going on here? Wait, the banners. What about those? Wasn't one broken? Dead? There's blood on them. Yeah, I already... Because that's where the body was moved. With. Okay, but he was there at around six. So what was he talking about? Objection. No. Okay, but if he didn't move, then that, then like, what about the body or whatever? I don't know. Contradiction, okay. maybe? Miss Newman took over half a day. Can you please be a little more precise than that? Ah, uh, ha, 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 ha. What a wonderful question. She was having quite... They were having... Whoops. Quite some tough time, you see. Prosecutor Gavin's statue alone took her from the morning hours to the evening. I'm just gonna say her, because Robin does seem comfortable with being a girl. Mm, it's a rather large statue, after all. Don't be silly. It merely exposes the difference between student and teacher. I have our finished most of the okay. <laughs> Most of the other statue? What exactly does that mean? I see. In academics as well as art, learning the basics is incredibly important. In short, you skipped the most important part of the statue making, didn't you? Objection! <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble with Moto! Yeah, that's a good one. The questions are right to have a style of basics that take so much time. That's his voice, I guess. The first year of such as I, you skipped the whole 16 one paragraph! Unlike Miss Fancy Pants here, who lacks all lawyerly fundamentals. Dude, you were in prison for like how long again? Quite you. Shut up. No. Uh -huh. Now you understand that it might work as if Tara is done. Yeah? I, I don't. What? <laughs> I've tried everything, but I still can't prove anything. Okay, so. I guess I. I concede. Hmm? I can't hear you so loudly this time. <laughs> <laughs> See, the professor means never left the stage. <laughs> What's wrong? That took me so long. I was there at the stage the entire time. I couldn't possibly have committed that crime. I should be. I should be a poet. I'm not gonna give up here. I'm afraid I have to side with the witness, Miss Sykes. And unless you have any further objections, I have to put this issue to rest. Oh. Not yet. The defense still has an objection. Athena, you've thought of something? Well, as I said, not yet. Oh man, I thought you did something cool. Oh, so it's time for illegal smoke and mirrors? Bluff it till you make it. Okay. Not yet, Athena. It's not yet time to quit. It's at times like these, even when there's no way, no way out that you have to... Yeah. I have to turn the case upside down. That's another me amendment. Not really, takes, but... Takes the file and turns it upside down. Instead of focusing on what the professor means, could have gone to the art room. <laughs> she takes the autopsy report, flips it over. Ah, this autopsy report says not... Say that? I didn't say that. What do you mean? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Witness is talking. Listen to him. So Mr. Justice, did you just call Prosecutor Gavin your boyfriend? Are we still on this? Are you kidding me? Sykes, don't know. You were leaning to your wheel to play quite the out. Well, damn it. But how will you respond when I come slashing at you like this? 
The remnant of a large bloodstain was detected in the art. Okay, what if Kazuma was Blackwell's um, ancestor? Because they do the thing. This sprite. They're both samurai, and that's why he's a fucking nerd. Because he's like, I'm descended from a samurai! <laughs> Why would there be blood if there if the murder occurred on the stage as you claimed? The blood stain in the art room was fake. Al, I'll tell you how. All it was needed was something that could transport the blood upstairs. And that something was... A piece of evidence we've just fin finished discussing. The cloth? The killer used this to bring the victim's blood up to the art room. The governor's banner. This? Oh, it's broken. <laughs> he's spinning uh -huh. the globe on his finger like he's like it's he's a been basketball. Doing that all, he's been doing that the whole I know he's about to ball in, bro. It's only garbage because someone tried to destroy it by tossing it in the incinerator. That someone was most likely the killer to get the killer seeking to get rid of crucial evidence. The killer used the wire to bring the blood soaked Gavner's banner to the art room. Then the blood was wiped into the floor to complete the ruse. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> Order! Order, this is quite a development! I think the body was ever actually moved! your globe because you didn't have it in your hands when we met you. Oh! I know what it was! Then what was it indeed? It's the lady it's the Lady Justice, the goddess of law. The knot in the school banner shows that something was carried along the wire in it. <laughs> that's I know what I have to find. <laughs> Something that was in the art room before the murder and on the stage after. I have it! I have it! I can't. I cannot. I cannot take that seriously. It's the new judge's voice. <laughs> I believe it was the statue that broke the other two, nor Professor Foote's body. <clears throat> the unique statue you see under that pure white lady justice from earlier. Professor Court accidentally broke it while she was polishing it the other day before the mock trial. But she used her own unique artistic sense and took me to repair it as you see here. Nobody would have guessed that it was originally Lady Justice. Silence. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps you were onto something. But why, pray tell, would anyone move that scrap heap relic in such a tedious manner? What's an impression, son? Give him a call. You know why? You know why? But the fact that you won't acknowledge it shows how twisted you are. Twisted, Sammer! Lady Justice was moved during the mock trial. During that time, Professor Means was fabricating an alibi with his pre-recorded speech. If we consider the fact, then Lady Justice has moved in order to... Hide the body. Point us, Point to, us the body. to the body. Interrupt the mob shop. Point us to the body. Yep. Professor Means sees his pre-recorded speech to fake an alibi during the mock trial. He wanted to make it look like he could have possibly have moved the body. Moving Lady Justice was his way of pointing us to the body and cementing his alibi. Mm. That's quite a persuasive argument. I, I didn't understand not. any of that. For a while there, I thought you weren't taking the trust seriously. Well done. Girl. <laughs> I'm still here, you know. <laughs> you should never underestimate me, Athena Sykes. Professor Reigns always gets what he says. 
always needs what he says, and says what he needs by all means. Chester, are you okay? Your voice sounds really, like, choppy. Shut up! Okay. Fine then, say it. Already, I'm waiting. Shut up! Nuh-uh. Shut up. Why are you covering up your heart and then hiding as it can until the next day? Probably students press the road, press the stage so they let my lecture for the new york time. So it's... Riddle me this. <laughs> so I'm doing this. Why didn't anyone see the daddy the entire time? That can't be explained. By... Uh. <laughs> oh my god. The victim was murdered on stage and left there. The body would inevitably have been discovered. And of course, there was no way to hide a body up on that stage. This isn't good, Athena. Our claim is this close to being beaten to a pulp. I know. Our claim? You didn't say shit. Sorry. <laughs> Honest, um, he got better. <laughs> Hugh did. Athena Sykes' attorney badge is just for show. Flashback now shocked her so much. It is tough as it in the same manner as the old map talk. Did you not lose everything you worked so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen then. Won't it? Won't mm -hmm. we'll, die. I will you just do all the time like this. No, you don't do this. Do you just do okay? Do you have Delta Kappa? to save someone near and dear to me. Worked so hard to become a lawyer. Even studied psychology. Is that all in for naught? Am I just doomed to relive that all over again? Alright, show me the cutscenes. Come on, Athena. Show me the flashbacks. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Athena. What's wrong? Give in. Give out. Give in. Makes Athena breathe. It's not working. Everything's going dark. After all I've done, is this how it ends? Three options. Four options. By by four options, I mean there is like one thing that could have two things that could happen but one has four options so the first thing is that um athena just realizes what to do and just gets back to it the second thing is someone objects for her and that could be juniper apollo phoenix or simon so that's what i'm thinking wait till you see i love this scene it's my favorite It's my favorite one. Cutscene time! Oh, guess who did it? Who is it? It's Robin! <gasps> yeah. You leave Athena alone, man! She's the oh, one who stabbed me! I was not expecting Robin, but I'm so glad it is! No, 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 just watch, just watch. It's everyone. That will use the power of friendship. Just because of Athena, I could stop hiding and start living my life as a girl again. And she saved the friendship between Hugh, Juniper, and I. 
I think you're an awesome lawyer, Athena. One of the best. But you raised false charges against you. Not at all. I've done some seriously unforgivable things. Objection! This is probably you. You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> What's the big deal? False charges are nothing to be scared of. And I'm not even mad at you. I should really be thanking you. You use legitimate means to expose my wrongdoings and give me a chance to re-examine what's important. What's the matter if I can't thank Juniper? Guess who's next? I mean, the whole reason I've come so far is- OBJECTION! It's not over yet, Thena. Even now, at this very moment, I still believe in you. Mm. I know you're better than most people, Athena. I know you're better than most people. Shut up! Fuck! And I know you've suffered. Oh, surrendered. Ah! I know you've surrendered to the dark age of the law like the professor did. What did I say? I, I said like it wrong. I, can really I don't know what to do. I know you'd never surrender to the Dark Age of the Law, sorry. Silence. Stop your bleating this instant. You look an utter fool. Wait, we'll use the power of friendship. <laughs> there is one who awaits you. Is there not? And that is the reason you have studied so very hard. Are you prepared to give up on all you have worked for thus far? It would not do. To have you disappoint you know who! You know who? I... I... I'm just... Oh, fuck. Listen, if I had to do the judge's voice, and I did Jigoku for like all those serious moments, then I can do this. I can do this. It's a kazoo, man. Objection. Don't worry, Athena. You're doing fine. The truth will always win against people like him. But Apollo, what am I supposed to do now? Listen. All you have to do is take a deep breath and look back over the entire case. If there's truth to be found, and there always is, you're sure to find it. Now let you see me- oh fuck, now let you see me smile. Now let me see you smile. Remember what Mr. Wright said? The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Everyone. You don't have to worry about me now. We're just using the power of friendship. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Dana Sykes is psyched and ready to rock. Prepare for your utter defeat. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Lock in, lock in, guys, lock in. Lock in, lock in. Professor Court wasn't killed in the hurt. She was killed right where her body was found. We know because there wasn't any time to move the body there from, any from somewhere else. But that means the body had to have been found hidden somewhere on stage until it was found. Okay. Let's think along these lines and see where it takes us. It would, well, she does have the things, the ropes on her hands, so she might have been tied up somewhere. The wire? Maybe. First up? That's what I was thinking. When did Professor Means remove the body from its hiding place? Let's see. What was he doing right before the body was discovered? He was using the span of time his fake alibi created to move the body to where it would be more easily spotted. Therefore, the only time Professor Means could have removed the body from its hiding place is... Before the mock during. trial? Isn't it during? Because, you know... Oh, during. You know. Yeah, because of alibi. Okay. During. It was during the mock trial, specifically. During the speech. 
Or while well, Junie wasn't there to make it look like she did it. I don't know, because they're both plausible. But... Ugh, it's, uh, Junie. Uh, I don't know. Just during the speech, she was he was doing it. Yeah, but at the same time. During the speech, he was yeah, because he wasn't there during the speech. He was yeah. playing a recording. Yeah, let's go with this. Let's just go with that. <laughs> Professor Mains moved the bod to an easily seen location during this long pre-recorded speech. The, pres the professor also moved something to the stage that wasn't there before. Specifically, white statue. During the mock trial, Professor Mains wrapped the white lady justice in a school banner. Send it zipping down to the stage with a crash, killing two birds with one stone. He threw the attention to the body and made it look like the murder occurred in the art room. Mm -hmm. But was there anywhere to hide a body on that stage? Doesn't seem likely. No, there had to be some place. Wait a second. How about something that should have been finished but was only mostly done? The statue? The second missed the right statue? Yeah. Uh -huh. Something was used to cover the body up. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh no! He tied her hands. Not. He tied her hands to the skeleton to make it look like she was the. Oh my god! Uh huh. And that way, no one would suspect there was a body hidden inside. Was there already? What was there already on the stage? The, the yeah, just, just press it. The right step. Oh my god! This is crazy. It's so good. Oh, I know the Mr. Right statue was never actually finished body was wrapped in under some cloth to hide what was really inside. Cleverly disguising it as the boss's statue. Whoa. She has a really big brain. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Newman gave up on the right statue, yet Professor Means finished it on a single night. Yes, what an impressive feat that was! Objection! Objection! No, his so-called work of art deserves none of our praise. That's because he was only a facade to hide his real work. The murder of Professor Court. Come again? I'm afraid I don't follow. He hid the body by making it look like the statue of Mr. Wright. That's why the thing, her wrists. With the bloody, with the... With the, with the body wrapped under a piece of cloth, it looked just like a statue. <laughs> what? I second that what? <laughs> now this is getting interesting. Oh, I love him. <laughs> I we'll never know until we try. Uh oh. I think I know where this is going. Okay, Paul, time to turn me into a reasonable likeness of Mr. Wright. I'm gonna pose like a statue, like so. And now I want you to wrap me up in a cloth up so I look like a statue. Um, I hate to ask the obvious, but where am I supposed to get this magical cloth? Hey, head forehead, I have one right here for you. I'm afraid that isn't the right color, Mr. Justice. Well, given how sudden the request was, it's kind of the best I can do, Your Honor. <laughs> what happens? I'm scared. What happens? It's fun. It's just fucking mad. Alright, I think that about does it. It's pink. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, everyone? Do I look like a statue of Mr. Red or what? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some random person to me. Aren't the statues a pair of busts? Phoenix Wright has that spiky hair on the back of his head. Forget the ha oh, this isn't. Yeah, the statue's head is way bigger than your average person's anyway. He had a hand up to me for trying anyway. And that's it! The hands! Yeah! 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 Mm. Her hands are raised over her head and there are dark bruises around her wrists. Yeah, the professor was probably tied up with something. Phoenix Wright cameo in a Phoenix Wright game. The marks on her wrist indicated she's been tied up. Apollo, tie me up in the new post. Like, you're not into this kind of thing, are you? What? 
No! Besides, it was your idea! Just tell me how to tie your hands already! That's the point Rupert tied together. And we can't help but think that's related. How should I arrange myself to match the shape I want given her? Behind my head. Be be behind my head. Behind my head. I'll tie both of my hands behind my head. This is so stupid. I don't understand. It makes the hair! <laughs> See, this may be possible to fix the spikes on the back of Mr. Red's forehead. Forehead? Head. Sure, then. What about the statue's arm? With both arms behind your head, you can't exactly complete the pose. Simon is just watching two children do arts and crafts right now. <laughs> that would be awful. You can't make that injection pose like this. Mm. Can't help but thinking you've forgotten something, Athena. Something on the body that you don't have right now. The arrow? Does the victim's body have the I don't. This. The arrow. Take that! But wasn't it plunged after? Alright, there was an arrow sticking out of her side. Okay, Apollo, take that and plunge it into my side. W are you crazy? <laughs> Fine, then go get some duct tape. Rapido. Snap. Alright, alright. I don't need to know either other language to know bossy when I hear it. <laughs> Fatal arrow to the side. Spiky hair created from two hands. <laughs> That's not really duct tape, but... Master masterpiece in the making. Now cover me with the cloth. I remember to make arrows stand out, okay? God. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. It's so Here we go. It's so stupid. It's not as bad as turnabout big top. I get this. Short. Shh, remember your indoor voice, dear. Nobody's buying it. The arrow's nowhere near long enough. But what else could you use for the arm? Hey, let's go ah. back to when uh, when we met when we met this guy. Because he didn't have the stupid thing. It's this. It's this. It's that. Of course, she's not giving up. After all she's put me through, she owes me an explanation and one that makes sense! Now disappointment getting the penalty will be no doubt be painful! Sometimes I'm gonna get this right time. Right time? Think, Athena, think! <laughs> Professor Court was murdered when she stopped by the stage to see Professor Means. If it wasn't premediated, he must have used something close to hand in his little root. Bro? Apollo, show me those pages out of photos again. Like that? Like right now? Okay, hold on. <laughs> Poor Apollo. Please, please, please. Please be in this photo. It just has to be. <gasps> the arm on the right is that really this right here. It's this. It's this. It's Robin. <laughs> it's Robin. Robin was the arm. It's Hugh. Hugh was the arm. <laughs> Take that. Take that. Take that. Got it. I know what he used with the arm on the statue of Mr. Wright. Yes, he is. <laughs> no way, the only mean professor is this story yeah, right there. Hey, you can't say that while you're in that pose like that. Shut <laughs> up, Apollo. <laughs> it's a globe. It's turning up a letter to me. Blackwell is surely <laughs> sleeping by now. <laughs> he is. He's falling asleep. Oh, he's literally just watching these two. Like, that's perfect. Mr. Wright couldn't possibly object to such an awesome arm. What? Okay, go for it, Apollo. Mr. Wright, do you object to such an awesome arm? Uh, no. Damn it. <laughs> sure, I'll give your arm a hand. <laughs> Cloth and binding coming right up. I just imagine Apollo tripping on the cloth as he's putting it over her. Objection! <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, look, okay. it's Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix, right. <laughs> oh, sorry, what happened? I was sleeping. <laughs> and what's what's this? Where did Sykes Dono go? <laughs> <laughs> look, it's Phoenix, right? Look, it's a famous lawyer! That's definitely him. I know that pose anywhere. 
You did it! Didn't we? Mr. Wright, does that look like you? Um, uh, I guess. I can't laugh. I didn't hear it, so I'll do it. <laughs> well, am I not the spitting image of the legendary Phoenix Wright? Objection! Mr. Wright, shut up. Okay, sorry. The man who will bring us out of these dark ages and into a new era, into an era of brilliant golden light. Golden light? All I see before me is the pink s specter of a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because Mr. Wright likes a statue. He's possibly tickled pink. Get it, Polo? He's tickled pink. Ah, that joke deserves a pink slip. Agreed. Hmm, seems to gather is quite impressed with the defense's sharp thinking. And the witness? Oh, she's back. Not so fast there, Buster. How did you get out of that so quickly? Unfortunately for you, I can prove my theory to be more than mere coincidence. Like, the, the cloth and the stuff is just on the ground after she, like, hurriedly took it off. Test the spear for Test blood. The spear. The spear for yeah. <clears throat> we had assumed the victim's jacket wound came from this arrow being forcibly shoved okay, in. I'm almost done this, I promise. Yeah, we're almost done. But if the wound was from the spear instead, there's at least like five, ten minutes of this left. And we should be able to detect traces of the victim's blood on it. It's almost three hours, this one. You don't expect us to take lectures from me now. I cannot speak. Now I ask you in the gallery. Help me decide the professor's fate. The juror system. The juror system. But there's no jurors. You. Oh my God. We take bar exam. Boo. Boo. Writing, my guy. Guilty. Oh! I hate that. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Prosecutor Blackwell, what has become of our witness Aristotle means? It is a sexton of suspected. Blood was detected on the stuff. He has admitted to his heinous crime, all of it. We shall join us in the clink tomorrow. His teaching skills can be put to good use there. Great. He'll teach felons that the end justifies the means. So much for rehabilitation. And then that's what the professor's motive was. <laughs> I could barely make out a word he said on account of his shattered teeth and his kazoo voice. <laughs> One of them. inmates was once a surgeon. Why not a former doctor? Ah, uh, you didn't expect me to say the word kazoo ever in your life, did you, Sykes Dono? I eventually had him put pen to paper. It turns out Professor Means was one big taking was the one taking the bribes. The victim had suspected him after a report from the class snitch. <laughs> that led to her led to her that led her to question him at length the day of the killing right there on the stage. The result of the heinous crime that was brought before this court. The fool, like Newman, had come to know of the script's contents via the victim's note. It seems he came up with a plan to stab the victim with her own all in order to make the killing look like the one in script and thus frame the defendant. 
like a scrap of paper with Hugh's name and the mark as Professor Court's bit planner. Yes, about that. Those planners are bestowed upon the students graduating at the top of their class. Really? Well then... Sebastian de Best has one. <laughs> Once upon a time, Professor Means was also rewarded the same notebook. The handwriting is being analyzed now, but it's not as... But like as not, the scrap belonged to him. This, too, was evidence of the bribery scream that the victim had attained. Hmm. No, that Constance Court was clean, and the only Aristotle means took the bribes. Uh, I think that professor would murder a colleague then try to pin it on a student. This is the Dark Age. God damn it! <laughs> and the first step is a hand on my running a promising long my young lady! This girl has invited Jennifer Woods! Yay! I hope this doesn't happen again. <laughs> Too much later. Oh no! I'm being framed for murder again! I wish you all the best on your road to becoming a courtroom judge! I need young people like you! If we ever to hope to restore the law to its former glory. I'm dropping out of school! Yes, Your Honor, I'll work as hard as I can. Maybe one day I'll be able to work with all of you and make a difference. Proudly serve Professor Court's memory. Do not let her death be in vain. That's the last, that's the last thing I expect to hear from them today. Other than kazoo voice? <laughs> Card is adjourned! Just get out of here! I'll say it again. Kazoo voice! Kazoo voice! What? Why does, why does that make me laugh? I don't understand. Thank you, Fina. I really mean it. <laughs> it was nothing, really. I can take the biggest tangled mess of a case and unravel it just like that. I really hope this doesn't happen again. It'd be really Me sucky too. if that happened again. Is it she really taller is. than Apollo? This is true. I don't know, you look pretty wound up there at the end. Literally and figuratively. I look pretty hungry for a knuckle sandwich, Buster. I... I wanna thank you- She's taller than Apollo! I wanna thank you too, Apollo. <laughs> don't mention it. The way you were always there for Fina when she was in a bind. And at the detention center where you sm where your smile gave me hope and there was none. It's like the warm rays of the sun shining down on peaceful woodlands. I think you're an absolutely amazing person. Thanks, Juniper. It means a lot to me. But I still have lots of work to do. Maybe someday I'll know what the law is. And I can't wait until I see you on the judge's bench. <laughs> I promise. I promise you I'll get there someday. That's why until that day, I'll... I'll... Be dating Athena! What? Hey, what? Guys, I've got some big news! I mean, this is big! Am I interrupting something? No, it's okay, I think. So what's the big news? Athena, why is that girl on top of you? Why is she hugging you so tightly? Mm, no reason. C continue what you were saying, Tracy. School festival! She was supposed to have been cancelled after what happened, but... We just got a call. I'm here again. In memory of Professor Constance Corr who worked so hard to make it happen. The festival is being extended one day extra until tomorrow. Really? Alright! Alright, Clav. Alright, Clav. Clav here? Get up here. <gasps> oh, the cutscenes... So bad. Oh. Let me watch. I, the cutscene's not working. I hate this. We've got a special oh, treat no. for all of you. A love letter for Athena's legal academy. Oh God. Achtung, baby. It's Achtung, baby. Serenade. Oh. See, that's actually Clavier's POV. Yeah, yeah that's Clavier's POV. I hate that the cutscenes aren't working. On the YouTube. Yeah. That's sad. Wow, oh, that was so much fun. School festivals are amazing. Wow, I can't believe that someone died in the dressing room. Wait, sorry, that's the- I, I got wrong, deja vu. Wrong. I got deja vu, wrong. sorry. <laughs> I think you and Robin are getting a little carried away. 
Mr. Wright, thank you for that training seminar. <laughs> Just remember the objection pose is all about attitude. Oh, and congrats on your mock trial win. Although Robin had you for a while there. I did, didn't I? But I'm just glad we're back to how we used to be. Just a Athena. You know what? I think I'll stick with becoming a prosecutor after all. I'm going to make it for my mock trial loss by winning the real deals in court. Mock trial loss? What loss? Wait, did they reprice a trial and you won? Let's skip, 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 skip. So, does this mean it's really gonna happen? 